Uh, some of the common mechanisms of injury to the shoulder, and people will wake up with shoulder pain and, and different causes. What are the, some, some of the common mechanisms of injuries to the shoulder? Um, their common mechanisms are uh, depend on, on the different age groups, really. Um, the younger the, the, a person is, the more um, uh, commonly we see that injuries cause the, uh, um, the shoulder to become um, hurt, such as uh, sporting events and, and contact type of activities. So a traumatic type one-time activity. Exactly. Okay. And then as we proceed um, you know, uh, towards the latter part of uh, our, our life, or certainly in the, in the middle uh, years, we'll find that sometimes the, the rotator cuff uh, in, in this instance will um, experience some wear. It, it's overused. It gets used a lot for, for uh, uh, doing activities uh, around the house, doing activities where you work, uh, doing sporting activities. Mm -hmm. And those overuse activities will cause the tendons to become inflamed and cause the, the joint, therefore, to become inflamed. Now you say, you know, overused. Is that a, is that a common mechanism like people that either work overhead a lot or <clears throat> play overhead sports? Would, would they have a higher incidence of problems with the rotator cuff? Um, yes, uh, quite commonly we'll see that people who do repetitive sports overhead will have a tendency to have rotator cuff problems. And uh, examples of that would be uh, a, a swimmer, um, uh, oftentimes a tennis player, certainly a, an overhead thrower, a pitcher, or a catcher. Um, those individuals can clearly get themselves into uh, uh, some inflammation in the shoulder by virtue of just their activities. So the inflammation is kind of the early stage of it, and then there's breakdown of the tissue, and then you can possibly have a tear that develops? Yes. Um, I, I tell people that uh, oftentimes your rotator cuff, uh, when it when it uh, it's torn, it doesn't tear like a piece of paper that we rip. It tears very much like, like the knee wearing out in your jeans. Over time, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner until one day you look down and you got a hole in your jeans, but you didn't do anything to, to rip them on purpose. It just mm -hmm. happened. And then there, there may be some episode that kind of sets that trauma off, but it's been developing for a while. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Now, what about some of the more traumatic uh, mechanisms to injury to the shoulder, things like uh, uh, dislocations or motor vehicle accidents and forceful traumas? What, what happens there typically? Well, what happens there is, is the, 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 the ball and the socket of your shoulder are, um, are very free in the, in the motion that they allow you to, to perform, which is, uh, as I said before, helping you to move your hand in space to do activities you need to do during the day. If there's um, uh, trauma or force that's applied to the shoulder, then the ball can pop out of the socket much easier than other joints in your body. Those, the hinge joints don't dislocate as much as the ball and socket joints, mm -hmm. specifically the shoulder. So, um, uh, for instance, uh, someone who is um, playing in a football game and there's a fumble and they reach out to grab the ball and everybody piles on top, that, can, that force can cause that ball to pop right out of the socket and you have a dislocated shoulder. Okay. Um, now, there's, we find that there's certain sports that, that make people a little bit more vulnerable for uh, dislocation, such as, um, again, a football. Uh, even different positions that we see will, will have different types of, of dislocations. A lineman in a football team is more likely to have the ball pop out of the front of the socket, whereas um, a, a defensive player, like a linebacker or somebody in the secondary, is, is more likely to have the ball pop out of the back of the socket mm -hmm. because of just the forces that, that happen to them when they're playing the sport. The direction of the force. Right. Okay. Um, and, and you say ball and socket in terms of this joint. I mean, most people will ask me, is there, is there really a socket there? Is there a bony socket like in the hip joint? It, it's a little different, right? Yes, it is a little different. The, the socket in the, um, in the shoulder is a little bit more shallow. I tell people, if you want to think of how the shoulder works from the standpoint of, of the, the ball and the socket or how the joint works uh, mechanically, think of a golf ball sitting on a tee. When a golf ball sits on a tee, what holds the, the ball in the tee is the little, the little lip that comes up. And so that is, uh, and if you were to spin that ball in the, in the golf tee, that's how your arm rotates around when you do the things you need to do. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the other areas the, from an anatomy standpoint you didn't really talk about is this labrum. And the, you know, people hear about it in the news, baseball players and such. That's the thing that kind of helps deepen the socket. And, and that becomes a source of problems as well, right? That's correct. When um, the, the, if we think of that golf ball and the tee analogy, the part of the tee that, that comes up and hugs or extends to keep that ball from rolling around or off the, off the tee, um, that would be referred to as a labrum. And it's, it's, a, uh, it's not a bone, it's, but it's not a muscle. It's very um, 
the stiff structure. I tell people think of the stiffness of a, of, a, of an eraser you use in grade school. Mm. It's got some it's got some pliability to it. You can bend it a little bit, but it's pretty strong. Okay. And if someone has has an injury to their shoulder, if if they're um, uh, they're a, an athlete, or, or, or they slip and fall, and their and their shoulder um, uh, comes out of the socket. What often happens is, as the ball comes out of the socket, it hits that labrum and it knocks it off. Mm -hmm. So it'll cause it to break away from the bone. Well, once we put the ball back in the socket, that's fine. But now that 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 labrum's been broken off or been torn, that's what we refer to as a tear. Mm -hmm. um, then it's much easier for that ball to go in and out of the socket. So people start having more and more shoulder dislocations. Sometimes just sleeping in bed when they roll mm -hmm. over. That just creates this chronic instability, and we'll we'll kind of talk about that as we get going. Yeah.